This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this vector helix icon using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and I'll get started here in Inkscape. And by the way if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do here in Inkscape is make sure that the view is set to custom. Then we'll zoom in at one-to-one. -one. And then we'll open up our line and distribute menu. And then we'll open up the fill and stroke dialog. So we have them both open right there. And the first thing we're going to do is create an ellipse. So let's grab the circles and ellipses tool and just click and drag on the canvas to create an ellipse like that. And let me go back to the select tool and I'm gonna change the width and the height of this. The width, I'm gonna erase that and type in 150 and then hit tab to skip over to the height and I'll make the height 300, 300, and then hit enter. So we have a 150 by 300 pixel ellipse like that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the opacity and bring this down about in half. And then I'll duplicate this by right clicking it and going to duplicate. And I'll turn that duplicated copy red. And then I'm gonna duplicate it again. Right click, duplicate, and I'll turn it green. And then I'll hold control and grab this top arrow up here and just click and drag that down about that much. And then I'll hold control and grab this bottom arrow down here and pull that out about that much. And I'm actually gonna hold control and come up here and bring this up a little more. We want this, see this red part that's sticking out? That's what we're paying attention to. We want that to be pretty small in comparison to the rest of it. So I'd say that's a pretty good proportion right there. And once you have that positioned like that, you can just hold shift, click on the red shape and go to path, difference. And then we'll take this black shape right here, we'll duplicate that. But instead of right clicking and going to duplicate, I'll just hit Control D on the keyboard. And I'll turn that green. And then hold Control on the keyboard and just click and drag this off to the right about that much. And I'm gonna zoom in on this top portion over here. So I'm just gonna press plus on the keyboard a couple of times. And I'm gonna grab the Bezier pen, which is right here, where you just press B on the keyboard. Snap to the top of the, ver the very top of the ellipse right here. Actually, you know what, we gotta turn on the snap tool first. Uh, this little green squiggly line that says snap to paths, we'll turn that on. And then we'll snap the cursor to the top of this green ellipse and then click. And then hold control and bring this line straight out to the right until it snaps to the top of that red shape and then click. And then hold control and bring this line straight down. I'm actually going to zoom out by pressing plus on the keyboard, uh, minus on the keyboard. Zoom out a little bit. Hold control and bring this line straight down until it snaps to the bottom. Click. Still holding control, bring it to the left until it snaps, and click, and we can let go of control, and bring it back to the starting point, so we have that shape there like that. And then we can turn off the snap to pads. We'll go back to the select tool, hold shift on the keyboard, and click on the green ellipse, and go to path, union. Then I'll take this black ellipse right here, and I'll duplicate that by hitting control D on the keyboard. And then I'll hold shift and click on the green shape, and go to path, difference. And then I'll duplicate this green object right here by hitting control D on the keyboard. We'll make that blue and we'll flip that horizontally and then hold shift and click on the black ellipse and click on the button down here that says align right sides and then click off it to deselect everything. So what we can do now is we can take this black ellipse and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. Then we'll click on the blue shape and we just want to drop this below the other shape. So we'll just click this button up here that says lower selection to the bottom. And what we want to do now is we want to click on this red shape up here. And whatever the height of that is, click and drag, highlight that, that number value and hit control C on the keyboard to copy that. And then we're going to go to um, the uh, create squares and rectangles tool. And we're going to cr create a rectangle going over this object that's wider than the entire graphic. So just make sure it's wider than the entire graphic like that. And let me go back to the select tool. And then we'll come over here, we'll change the height of this and so just highlight that, erase that and hit control V on the keyboard to paste it in. We want that height to be the same as the height of that red shape. And then hold shift and click on the green shape and click the button that says align top edges. And then click off of that to deselect everything. So let's click on just this blue shape and hit control D on the keyboard to duplicate that. And then hold shift and click on the green shape and go to path, intersection. 
and then click on the other blue rectangle and then hold shift and click on this blue crescent shape and go to path intersection and then what we want to do now is click and drag over all of that right here and group that together and we now have the beginning of the top here so we're going to use this to construct the rest of the graphics so what we're going to do now is let's turn on the snap to cusp nodes tool up here turn that button on and let's duplicate this object by hitting control D and then we'll flip this vertically and then horizontally and then we'll come over here and we'll just take this object and snap it to the corner right here like that we'll take this object hit control D on the keyboard to duplicate that click and drag this over here and snap that to that corner right there and what we could do now is we could turn off the snap to cusp nodes we're done with that and then we can click and drag over this entire thing and just ungroup it all bring the opacity of it all the way up and click off of it to deselect and you'll see we now have the structure we just have to color it in and put a little fine, uh, finishing touches on it what I want to do now is I want to click on this green shape and then hold shift and click on the green shape beneath it and we'll just make sure that they are one object by unifying them together so we'll go to path union and then we can take this blue shape over here and just send that to the bottom so it's not sticking out above the green shape and we'll do the same thing over here we'll click on this blue shape and then hold shift and click on the blue shape beneath it oops I clicked the wrong button with them both selected we can go to path union and what we'll do now is we can just start to color this in you can click off it to deselect everything you can see I used a gradient to color this in over here and I put a little bit of a glare effect on these two sides so uh, to create the gradient let's click on this green shape over here and the gradient I used I created it by coming down to the color picker over here I'm going to bring this all the way to the right and like there's this sharp pink color right here I think it's FF0066 I'll make it that color then I'll come up to the fill tab and under the HSL tab I'll come up to the H row and just hit the up arrow until it gets to uh, 247 like that and then I'm going to give this a linear gradient click on the linear gradient tool button and then press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool and I'll take this stop and put it up here I'll take this stop and put it down there and I'll just click on this stop up here and I'm gonna bring the opacity all the way up I'm gonna come back down here to the color picker and slide this all the way back to the left and I'm gonna give this other stop right here this yellow shade right here which is uh, FFCC00 click on that and you'll see we have our little gradient beginning there so uh, what I'll do now is let's click off of that to deselect let's click on that red shape and then hold shift and click on this red shape and then hold shift still and click on that red shape and we'll make this all that same shade of yellow that FFCC00 but I'm gonna come over here to the L row and slide that to the right to make that lighter like that and click off of that to deselect and the next we just have to color in the rest of this so let's click on this object right here give that a linear gradient We'll go to the drop down and just choose that gradient we already created press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool and I'll just put this stop up here put this stop down there that's pretty good and then we can just click on the green shape give that a linear gradient as well go to the drop down choose that gradient we already created put this stop down here and this stop up there and then uh, finally we'll click on this blue shape give that a linear gradient we'll go to the drop down choose our gradient put this stop up here this one down there that's pretty good we'll go back to the select tool press one on the keyboard to zoom out to 100 percent one last final step is to put this little glare of light on each side so let me actually zoom back in on that a little bit I'll press plus on the keyboard a couple of times let's click on this shape right here and let's duplicate that by hitting control D turn that white bring the opacity down in half and then I'll duplicate that again by hitting control D I'll turn that copy green and then hold control and just move this off to the right until it's about halfway through we're looking at the intersecting area here we want the intersecting area to be about the same thickness as the white area outside of it, it doesn't have to be exact just somewhere in the ballpark and I'd say that's close enough so I'll hold shift and click on this object right here and go to path difference and I'll do the same thing right here click on that hit control D to duplicate that make that white bring the opacity down about in half hit control D again to duplicate it turn that copy green hold control and just click and drag this off to the right until it's about halfway through then hold shift and click on the white shape and go to path 
difference. And with this now, I'm just going to bring the opacity all the way up. Then I'll give that a linear gradient. And I'll press G on the keyboard. I'll take this white stop and put it towards the top up here. And I'll take the transparent stop and put it down about over here like that. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'll click on that white object, bring the opacity all the way up. Give that a linear gradient. Put the white stop at the top over here. Take this stop and put it down there about like that. We can uh, go back to the select tool. Let's press one on the keyboard to zoom out to 100%. Click and drag over the whole thing and group it together. And if you notice here in the thumbnail, I actually have, I gave it a slight slant to the right. So if you want, you could do that as well. I'm just going to double click. The, I'm going to click it again to get back, to get the rotation handles. And up top, there'll be this little slider arrow. You just bring that to the right a little bit. Give that a little bit of a slant. And you could scale it up or scale it down or, you know, do whatever you'd like. And that's, that's pretty much it. That's how you can create that simple helix graphic using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.